So now we're going to talk about fossils, right? Because now we have a mental context of thinking about what's going on with fossils. Fossils are uh, in the in the geologic column. They're laid down during the flood, and uh, so let's let's get into that now. So the first question is, where does the pattern come from? So at the very bottom of the geologic column, we have invertebrates, a bunch of like bottom dwelling um, uh, ocean creatures, things like that. And then above that, you have uh, some fish. Then you go on, going on to land, we have amphibians and then reptiles. Uh, and then you have some of the larger dinosaurs. And finally, uh, um, some of the, um, uh, the mammals that we know now. So instead of this being a time series, in a creation mindset, this is uh, an ecological distribution. So if you can picture, you have... This massive, you know, Independence Day style tsunami uh, mud flow is coming in and burying things. It buries things in the order of their elevation. So, bottom dwelling sea creatures get buried first because they're on the bottom, right? And then you get, when you get to the coastline, you bury reptile or amphibians, reptiles, and low lying areas. And then you get to the bigger animals, which are living further inland. Uh, so that's that's basically where that comes from. The other factor is probably a certain amount of um, uh, water sorting, hydrologic sorting, I believe. I'm trying to stay away from uh, too many big words. Okay, now this is my favorite part of the presentation. This is a T-Rex femur bone, and this is all pretty recent. Um, and there was a <laughs> um, there was a bit of a mistake. They, they had a, a T-Rex femur bone, fossilized naturally, that they're moving in a museum. And uh, some poor intern dropped this thing. You know, these, these things are worth millions of dollars, so you do not want to drop them. And it cracked open. And uh, what, what was, uh, after the shock of, oh, I'm going to get fired, it was gone, uh, they realized that it stunk. It smelled bad on the inside of this T-Rex femur bone. And it's because it wasn't entirely fossilized. The inside of it's gooey, uh, which this should be a real shock in case you haven't heard this. Um, so a so, uh, great scientist named uh, Mary Schweitzer uh, started taking a look at this, and she found inside of this T-Rex bone that there's soft tissue. We've got you know bits of tissue, uh, bone marrow, uh, what look to be cells... And what's interesting, this is, this is my favorite. Those really look like intact blood cells. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure you could get this good off of a mummy. Uh, and, and so, of course, this makes me think of Jurassic Park, uh, which unfortunately scared everyone into not cloning dinosaurs. But I would still like to do it. Just don't clone a T-Rex. Uh, but the good news is, is that this, w- once we knew about this phenomena, partial fossilization, uh, Mary Schweitzer went and did a fresh dig so they could you know, track contamination and things like this. And uh, they dug up a, uh, they, they located a duckbill dinosaur in the ground and treated it under like sterile circumstances. And, um, and they were able to extract some soft tissue from the duckbill dinosaur's bill. And what they found was that not only were there proteins in there, not only are the proteins still folded, which is absurd in and of itself, but that the antibody for uh, duck, like actual duck, collagen, matches the duckbill dinosaur collagen. So they're using the same protein, even though they se- would be supposedly separated by millions of years. Um, so this is really counterintuitive because we actually know of cases where fossilization happens really fast. It's a chemical reaction. So depending on how ideal it is, uh, it can progress quickly or slowly. But this is a fully fossilized cowboy. Some people are bothered by this picture. I hope it doesn't bother anyone. This is a fully fossilized cowboy foot uh, and sort of a partially fossilized T-Rex. So there's a bit of a hint there. Uh, and finally... Uh, Where do fossil fuels come from? Uh, They're also a deposit that's laid down by the flood. Remember I said that it was a verdant place before? So there was a lot of photosynthesis that was stored in the ground. Or, sorry, stored in the plants, and the plants were all buried. And so we're basically running our cars off of the dead earth that preceded us. Um, 
So take that as you will. <laughs> so that comes from, from these plants and to a lesser degree animals, but probably not that much animals. Okay. You guys have survived for through an entire lesson. <laughs> <laughs>